Nicolas Cage is going to star in a scripted series about the Tiger King, Joe Exotic. Can you believe this? And to talk about it, we have our very own Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin, Frankie C and Jay Sabs <laughs> are here on this May 4th. May the 4th be with you. I hope you Star Wars nerds are enjoying the hell out of your national day of Star Warsdom. Frankie C., uh, what are you doing yes, besides sir. this podcast to celebrate Star Wars Day? Uh, well, I did watch. All right. It's a cartoon, but it's the Clone Wars. It's actually considered part of the Star Wars canon. Mm -hmm. So there are seven seasons. I just finished the final episode. I think just got uploaded yesterday or something. Oh, is so that I right? I watched the yesterday or this morning or something like that. And I was seeing a bunch of spoilers online. So I said, you know what? I got to go. I, I watched it, and that's that. So tonight, I'll probably watch the other one, the uh, the movie, The Rise of Skywalker. So is that the series finale or the season finale that you watched? Series. Oh, so it's done. No more. No moss. That, it's, yeah, it's called The Clone Wars, and it's uh, today was aired the last episode. Well, very cool. So it was good. It was Give a good. review. Tell the people. It was very good. It was uh, the, st the season started out a little slow, but it picked up. And it's important this season because some of it will go into the Mandalorian. Is that right? Yeah, because uh, the Mandalorian, they're adding this in the second season, a character called Ahsoka Tano. She's like Ahso a, a Jedi that quit being a Jedi. Oh, I thought that was the one from uh, Lion King. Okay. Go ahead. In the nice, right. <laughs> Right, that. <laughs> this Disney is out of control. I, they're just there. You got to watch cartoons. You got to watch the series. There's like nothing that you can't watch. This is like they they've the got Lion King. You got Tiger King. We've got control of your life. That Disney Corporation. All right. So uh, Nicolas Cage is going to play Tiger King, Joe Exotic, in a scripted series. This is according to uh, the showrunner and Variety that confirmed the story. Believe it or not, this is not the only Tiger King production that is uh, in production. I thought we were done. I thought we were too. I said, remember? I was like, hey, nobody gives a shit about Tiger King anymore. Like, nobody's going to care. You're wrong. And I was wrong. Yeah, don't give out any stock tips. <laughs> but if this doesn't happen, if this, if it's not Nicolas Cage, I'm, I'm right. Because nobody would care. The fact that Nicolas Cage, who has never ever appeared in a television series in his career has chose this to be his first tv project to play friggin joe exotic that's what brings this back up to the top of the list so it's not entirely my fault just so saying. i have to i might have to get into uh the tiger king now because nicholas cage i'm sorry love him or, or not he's one of the most entertaining actors of all time come on he's no matter what role he plays he puts a hundred percent into it. I Probably know, even more but than hundred percent. I think he's one of the worst actors of all time. But he's great, <laughs> Frank. You said that you like you were the, Frank. You said that like you were the president of the friggin' Nicolas Cage fan club. He is. I can if there Cage was one, then hours. I would apply. He's great. Come on, National Treasure. Did you watch that? Okay, National Treasure. I did like that movie, but okay. I don't like him in it. He's, no, he's the worst him. actor ever. He's not the worst actor ever. Yes, he is. That's a good question. Um, who's who's the worst actor ever? No, he's he's up there. He's top five. He worst he's he ever. overacts. James How Franco. James Franco. Yeah. What? You like James Franco? Man three again. James not Franco is actor. amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> You two are polar opposites. <laughs> James what, Franco, what was, come on. Just watch Spider-Man 3 again. And that's all I have to say. What was he bad in? Spider-Man? Spider-Man 3. Uh, so and was that know, other guy. Else. Everybody was kind of... What's his name? Everybody was kind of dead good. in Spider-Man 3. I agree. Yeah, but he was... Come on. When he was well, dancing with, with what's-her-face in the kitchen... I could point out some specifics here, but no one's Will, gonna get him. Willem Dafoe is that who you're talking about, Janine? He sucked. Yes. He sucked in that movie too, and he's a he great did. actor. I can't Maybe believe it was the James Franco. Know. Not a big fan.
He was good in Pineapple I Express. Mm-hmm. He was really good in Pineapple well, Express. I still can't get over the fact that in Pineapple Express, Seth Rogen was supposed to play the stoner part and Franco was supposed to play the other part. And they switched just before they started shooting the movie, just because. Like, what other <laughs> actors can do that? See, James Franco. I guess so. I guess yeah, so. Nicholas James Cage. Franco was playing a stoner. Big stretch. Do you think Nicolas Cage could ever play a stoner? No. Well, maybe. He did multiple he times. Like, Whoa. <laughs> the question is, is... Is Nicolas Cage going to be a good Joe Exotic? Because <laughs> yes. you had some big time actors. I think even Depp was talking about playing him at 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 oh, one point okay. in all of this. He was like, "Yeah, I might take a swing at this." Not Nicolas Cage. Oh. Nicolas Cage is great. Really? Moonstruck. Oh, again? Was it seventies or eighties? You never saw it. Tell me, you no. you never saw it. Thank you. I probably did. I, I probably did a Con long Air, time ago. The Rock. Which, you don't even know what movies I'm talking about. <laughs> Con, Con Air. Frank, name some James Franco movies that Nicolas Cage is in, and then maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah, right. right. <laughs> Nicolas Cage is a is a dynamo. He does. He Was just, he good in Con Air when he, though? When he because does something he takes over. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Face Off. I'm not saying. I mean, yeah, Face Off was great. He, I'm not saying he makes great movies, like uh, what was that one with the when he was on that island with the bees? Oh, that was the worst movie <laughs> Wicker, ever. Wicker Man. Yes, that was not good. That was a terrible movie, but he gave 120. percent You are like a Nicolas Cage. Ch- Jesus I've never, Christ. I've never heard anybody like get behind somebody before like this. He's this awesome. is crazy. I think that most of our people in our group can agree that Nicolas Cage is a horrible actor. He's one of the most entertaining actors. Whether or not you like his acting, anything you watch him in, you go, "Ah, oh, Nicolas Cage is awesome." He's the <laughs> king of the castle. He's the king of the castle today because everybody is talking about this Tiger King. Was Ghost Rider good? Was he good in that? I don't remember if that was well received or not. Yeah, they made a sequel. I, the, I, I did not see the sequel. The first one I thought was good. What's the movie he was in when he's like stealing cars? Was Angelina Jolie. Gone in 60 Seconds, another great one. That was a good movie. I'm trying to think of how really? good he was in it. That Oh, yeah. I mean... He wasn't over the top in it either. Janine, you have, in. you have a prime example of how stupid men are. You just put a bunch of cars stealing and action in it, and we're like, it's such a good movie. And Angelina Jolie. <laughs> and Angelina next, Jolie, yeah. Yeah. That's the it. next thing you're going to say is that you like a Fast and Furious series. I never saw a second. Of Fast and Fu- I didn't Fast and Furious movies. I liked the first one. I, I that was the last one I saw. I couldn't get on board with all the rest of them. The first one was interesting though. Undercover cop in a street racing thing. Like yeah, okay, I was there. For they that. don't need nine of them. N- I don't know how they got you nine. Think they're stopping at nine. They're, they're just gonna keep going. No. And a ride at Universal. <laughs> Look, how does that happen? Yeah, it's true. There's no Nicholas Cage ride them? at Universal. Ghost Rider, I think no. was something. <laughs> Could have been. I don't know. I don't is know. National Treasure somewhere? Is that a ride? I'm not even that sure. Could be. I don't know. The amazing thing about Fast and the Furious is I don't think in the history of Hollywood was there ever a movie franchise that got so bad it went straight to direct to video and then somehow <laughs> and then came, rebounded. Came back into the movies. Yeah, yeah, stronger than ever before. It was. It's bigger now than it ever was in the first the first Wait. couple of runs. What was Fast and the Furious like? Five mm-hmm. or six or seven or one of them was a direct to DVD release. That's how bad. Was it really? Yeah, that's how bad the franchise had gotten. And for whatever reason, what it just got it. It just resurrected. I don't even know how. Was it? Was it? It was probably. And I don't know about the timing of all this, but maybe Paul Walker's death. It yeah, it might have had a little to do with it, but it wasn't the main focus because at the time I think they did Tokyo Drift, which had nothing to do with the original story if i understand right. correctly it, didn't they bring didn't they bring one of them back with like they did a paul walker like cg kind mm-hmm. of thing maybe, maybe. That, i think that may have brought a lot of attention to it i don't know um for i'm gonna i'm gonna roll through a bunch of of uh nick cage movies oh, moonstruck gosh. was his big you. first one in 87 he did a bunch of others that i never heard of uh then he did it could happen to you Okay. 
that was a great we already talked about how great that movie was yes i don't, I don't know if he was see now janine's got me second guessing nick cage because probably anybody would have been good in that role maybe but yeah he nailed it <laughs> knowing was a good movie did you see that very underrated went right Which under one? the radar it's called knowing leaving las vegas yep. came out in 95 wasn't that a big one classic the rock con air 95 96 97 i feel like we have hit the we've hit the stride of nicholas cage what about city of angels where he plays the tom hanks role which probably should have been hanks uh probably. you know opposite meg ryan yeah. yeah i didn't see actually i didn't see that one i did see that one i guess uh and you loved I'm it for big o. no unforgettable like that was probably like hanks is unavailable what about billy crystal billy crystal's not around all right i guess we'll take the guy who was in con air let's get him yeah the heartthrob that is billy crystal <laughs> billy crystal he makes my heart throb all right buddy um something else throb i will say the family man he's good in the family man did you see that I one that one yes. i didn't see it but i want to i have so many uh nicholas cage movies to catch up on while i'm in quarantine that's what i'll do oh okay my god uh, he was good in Matchstick Men, actually, playing the the guy. You didn't see that, Frank? You're like a champion like of Nick Jan Cage. And I feel like Janine hasn't seen 95% of Nick Cage movies, <gasps> and she's no, calling I've him a bad a actor. I've seen a lot of his movies. She just okay. hates Nick Cage. She hates Nick Cage the way you love Nick Cage. You guys are just on the opposite side of the spectrum. <laughs> it's irrelevant but i don't know why it's yet. clearly irrelevant to his performance in movies you just both have a feeling about him and, and um wicker man probably did it oh, that was terrible me. right if we he could delete well, i'm sure if he could delete one movie he would probably delete that one <laughs> all right so nick cage is going to be in this eight episode series that's being produced by imagine television studios and cbs studios uh, it'll be taken to the market in a couple days. It's actually not based on the Netflix series. It's based on an article called Joe Exotic Dark Journey into the World of a Man Gone Wild by Leif Regstad. So they optioned this article. It's a that that was in a magazine called Texas Monthly. <laughs> I love it. And they're making an entire series out of this one article. <laughs> this is great. I can't imagine this is going to be good. Um, this CBS, is how bored we are. Yeah. <laughs> CBS, this is how you're right, Janine, because there's some executive somewhere that's like, um, yeah, okay, fine. I don't know. Uh, he's got kids running <laughs> on him. He's just like, a what? I've heard of Joe Exotic. Sure, whatever. Like, let's just do it. Let's steal okay. it. Let's Nick, steal it from Nick Netflix. Cage? Oh, he's not dead? Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, CBS. That's treasure, baby. CBS Studios optioned the article in June of 2019. So they've had wow. the rights to this actually sitting in their in their desk drawer. Uh, yeah, Dan, someone saw that coming. Dan Lagana will serve as a writer, showrunner, and executive producer under his overall deal with CBS Studios TV. Paul Young is going to executive produce Imagine's Brian Grazer. And Sammy Kim Valvey will executive produce as well. Brian Grazer turns shit into pure gold. So that's pretty amazing that Brian Grazer and Nicolas Cage are attached to a Joe Exotic uh, friggin' piece. It's going to be fantastic. I think it's going to focus on the story centers around Joe Exotic's uh, fight to keep his park even at the risk of losing his sanity. Oh, yeah. I think he was made for this role. He is kind of in that, like, I, I, I could freak out and, and go crazy over people any second now kind of a feel to it. Um, this is not the first show, though, to be optioned on Joe Exotic. This is the second scripted series that was announced. The first scripted series that was announced late last year involves Kate McKinnon, who is attached to star in an executive producer series based on the Wondery podcast Joe Exotic with McKinnon attached to play Carol Baskin. Oh, my God. That series Love hails her. from Universal Content Productions. According to sources, the studio is still seeking a writer for that project. So I can see that project never getting off the ground. But, um, I mean, that is interesting. Kate McKinnon actually probably would make a killer Carol Baskin. 
I think so. You know, I don't know the end of uh, the whole Tiger King thing. Is Joe Exotic a bad guy? No. He's the good guy. He's a good guy at the end of it. I would well, say he's a bad guy. I don't know. <laughs> did, did you he see? Is or isn't. I, I would say he's a. I would say he's a bad guy. You leave episode seven, the the first run of Tiger King. You leave feeling sort of bad for him because he, it, you can tell it was a situation where ten people were doing something wrong and nine people turned and pointed at him, and so the pe- government was like, "Okay, we'll put that guy in jail." Right. Okay. So that's kind of what happens. You kind of like that kind of sucks because he got screwed. But then they did that Joe McHale episode eight. Did you see that, Janine? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. And that one, that's like more of like this laid back, like Joe McHale was just FaceTiming people that were on the show from his bedroom and like, you know, what were things really like? And then you get a sense of, wow, Joe Exotic is a real piece of garbage. Like they, I'll give you, I'll give you the one story. So he's running this. He's run, and this is a little spoiler alert. So if you don't want to get spoiled on on episode eight of Tiger King, first of all, reevaluate life. Second of all, turn off the podcast for a second or skip ahead a couple of seconds. He's um, he's running this zoo in Oklahoma. This woman brings a horse over and she's like in tears and she's like, I just can't afford to keep this horse anymore. But it's like the love of my life. But you know, my husband, we're falling on hard times. He lost his job, blah, blah, blah. He's like consoling her. He's like, don't worry. He's like, we have plenty of room. We're going to give this horse a full life. I'll let him run around the back roads, you know, the back of the thing, the zoo, it's all open. He's going to be wonderful. It's going to be great. And she's actually, she leaves smiling, giving up her like lifelong pet. She leaves smiling. He comforted her. No sooner does she get in the car and drive away, he pulls out a gun, shoots the horse in the head, and feeds it to the tigers. This guy is a giant scumbag, so. and I am out. <laughs> so that just gives you a sense of like... You know, you know what pisses me off? Here's what pisses me off. Everybody I've asked about this uh, series, I said, is there any kind of animal cruelty or anything? Because I can't watch any of that. And there, nobody told me this. Nobody told. You know, I, no, they're right. They're not lying. The they're not lying to up. you. They're not lying to you. You don't really see. No, you don't. The animal cruelty. It's all stories of what people are recounting about him. Be, be, and there's a reason why, too. There's a reason why you don't see it, which is part of the show, which is why I'm not going to say anything about it. Um, what a scumbag. But yeah, he's a real, like, I mean, a family pet. Like, I know people are like, it's a horse. But it's, a, you know, to this woman, it was like her world. And he he didn't even, like, give it a couple of days. Like, to me, that's, when you hear the story, you're not surprised because of what you've heard about him or what you've seen. But the shocking part comes from he did it so quick. Like, he couldn't wait a friggin' day. Like, a day. Right. Come on. You know what I mean? Like he was like tigers. What if she are changed the mind and turned around turned the car around. I know. <laughs> I know. It's so creepy. It's so creepy. I always wonder too, oh, like crap. when you hear like this is such a thing in Hollywood. This is like when they were making movies about two people switching bodies. Like you never get one of these movies. You always get like they always come in droves of like two or three. Like and and then like some of them never get made and some of them just absolutely suck while the other ones are like okay i wonder if they would combine like if you're kate mckinnon do you pick up the phone today and you're like hey nicholas cage maybe we should you know we should work together on this then i would watch it if she was in it if kate mckinnon was in it to them (laughs) (laughs) that's true you know what i can't blame you for that one kate mckinnon is awesome oh you both agree on something this is uh how could you not? Kate McKinnon is awesome. She's the best. This is a surprising first. I just, I, I've never seen you have. A, that was like a blind love for Nicolas Cage there, Frank. You were like, even if the movie's bad, blind. he's still he, good. He might be in crap movies, but he's, I think he's entertaining. I don't know. Do we give a lot of, do we give a lot of slack? Jeez. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> that's what, that's all I hear when you're talking about Nicolas Cage. That's a bonus for the YouTube and Facebook people. We got, the we listeners got didn't get to see that. For you. <laughs> that's definitely a, a a meme or a gif. I don't know. Do you give slack to any other actor that's like sucks movie after movie and you're like, well, oh, he's trying. Uh, yeah, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I, uh, see, he he's one really up, is I'm in sure love with him. Agree. Okay. You're in love with Cage. Um, what was the movie that made that made you fall in love? National Treasure? 
national treasure. That was awesome. That was the one? Yeah. Plus, I worked with his brother, so that that might help. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Oh, excuse me. Where? Mm, yeah, Nick Cage's brother radio is a, a radio guy, and Frank worked mm, for him. Okay. I forgot. Or, so you have a personal connection to him. I get it. I do have a connection. But he's also entertaining. I love The Rock. The Rock was fantastic. Yes. I think I watched <laughs> maybe a half an hour of that, and I was like, yeah, the same for me. You didn't even it's... get to the island? No. I don't think I, I was like, nah, I'm out. I'm realizing I just haven't really watched a lot of Nick Cage I movies. Do like, I do like National Treasure. Where yeah. is the Declaration of Independence? I don't think that line has ever spoken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I there. think you're paraphrasing just a it's touch. There. <laughs> how, how close is National Treasure to the Da Vinci Code? Never saw or read the Da Vinci Code. Oh, really? <gasps> Yeah, I got to see that one or read it. I kind of wonder if you watch the Da Vinci Code, which is absolutely spectacular, and yeah, Hanks exactly. is killer in it, if you would think the same about National Treasure. He wouldn't. Well, I've seen great movies. Why would I have to compare it to... Because I think they're kind of the same movie. National Treasure. I'm not saying National Treasure is the greatest movie. I'm saying it's a really good movie, and, it, and Nicolas Cage is good in it. He's not over the top. He's not like a nut job the way he can be. I don't know. The last time you know, I saw you this like excited, Indiana, Indiana Jones type in that movie. The last time I saw you this excited, it was a it, it was a movie that involved Anakin Skywalker. See, I know his first name. Star Wars <laughs> yeah. people. May the fourth that be with good. you guys. I'm with you. May the fourth be with you. You had that one. You had that one teed up. You were waiting to throw that one at me. Nailed it, buddy. I Wikipedia <laughs> before the show started. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you write down the name Anakin Skywalker before? <laughs> <laughs> All right. First thing we got to address here. Well, first thing, it's been like a half an hour. Anakin Skywalker, more like Mannequin Skywalker. You know what I'm saying? We got to look at this dude's haircut right here. Let's go. Oh yeah. Someone Let's go. over the weekend shaved their head or did something. No, now, I didn't. did you do this or did someone else? Did your wife do this to you? It was a joint venture between my wife and I. I did about four oh, percent of it, um, and she did ninety six percent. She did most of it. Yeah. So. What was the joint part? You you did nothing. I went like this once. I grabbed the thing and I went, wait, hold on. And that was it. That was my 4%. Yeah. But we All did right, um, we did my son. I, so I have two beard shavers. I have the old one that I don't use anymore. And then I have a new one that I bought like a couple of years ago. And I just kept the old one for whatever reason. So there's not they're not even like real clippers. It's just really meant for your face. You know what I mean? <laughs> or other parts that Janine <laughs> yeah. is illustrating exactly. to the visual audience <laughs> once again. Um <laughs> Um, so we did my son first in like a truly scumbag move. We were like, should we cut my he was hair? The guinea pig. Like, like, yeah, he was the guinea pig. And so we did his hair first and we botched it. So he just got the full shaving and mine. We, we finished out. It's not great. It's quarantine. Great. I feel like, I don't know if like real Can you world... do full screen. Yeah. Let's see. I can't, let's I see. can barely see it. If you okay. can do full screen, I'll go full good. screen for it. Hold on a second here. Look at this. Look at this beautiful. It looks amazing. I did a really. You're still uh, kid and play. Well, you don't I... look like a lesbian like our friend. Who? Li- who? Oh. <laughs> I didn't say that. She said that. He said that actually. <laughs> I think he looks okay. He looks like a, he looks normal. He looks like himself. Yeah. Exactly. I look like this is it. I got a bu- I got a bush up here. What do you you know? What do you want from me? Like it's not going to be like you know magical. But she did a I really. Like, my wife no, did a good job good. with the she fade and job. everything. Yeah. But I think good. the top, you got to at least cut it right in half, the length. Well, here's the thing. Like we could buzz most of this, and that was the easy part. And then she scissored some of the top. But the scissoring is the difficult. That's that's what's hard. Like it's <laughs> hard. <laughs> Any comment? Scissoring is very hard. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he said it your eyebrows went sorry yeah, dude. Hit the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> um i've never had the experience but if you see if you, i'm gonna trust you on that to, uh, i'm gonna take your word for it janine um take my word but yeah i just yeah that's the hard part so even this is like buzzed a little bit but i don't know it, the weird thing was is i filmed the whole thing like we filmed the whole process and then we were when we were done i was like this is so 
uninteresting. Like I was going to share it with everybody and I was like, I couldn't imagine <laughs> sitting there just editing three out watching someone get a haircut it's so boring like i would speed it up and get to just only the, even speeding it up and getting to like the meaty parts it still sucked so i was like i'm not gonna put this out it doesn't make the any meat. sense how long could it have taken dude it took a while because we did my son first and that took a little while because we were actually trying to keep a little on the top of him so and then he was like freaking out then he was getting like covered in hair and he didn't like it so that took a while and then by the time we started doing my hair like we're working on it and then all of a sudden one buzzer went and then like uh, 20 minutes later the other buzzer went so this was like two days like we had to wait a whole day great to to sunday to do it again to wrap it all up on sunday so i right, think i'm next this has got to go it's impossible that, it's the side and the back it's like insane you know what the god's honest truth is like just buzzing the back and the sides i felt great like it didn't the top didn't it wasn't done it didn't look good but i still just felt better but it's impossible to do the scissors like it's just, it's impossible you have to be a barber in order to get that to look good so i don't know what you're going to do there man because it looks like you scissor the top of your head i do you need to still just laughing over scissors. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead watch <laughs> i would just love to see a history your search results history janine i would just love oh, no. No. to see what you've googled in life oh boy i'm gonna um, go upstairs and google uh nick cage movies but okay. <laughs> by the way i appreciate oh, janine's yeah. hair with the buns going all princess leia for us here on thank you May the one is higher nice. than the other but i did this very quick it doesn't. Works. It we looks like it. you spent a lot of time on it. If I could be honest, <laughs> her name was Lola. <laughs> she was a Leia. Her name was Leia. Oh. I like saying Lola. The the Weird Al song. There is a Star yes. Wars Weird Al song. That's why. That's yeah. the one I know. Star Wars Cantina, isn't that it? Mm -hmm. There's a there's a few of them. I feel like that's more popular yeah. than like the actual whatever the actual song is. Lola. I agree. Yeah, that's the one. Um, the MTA is using ultraviolet lights to kill yeah. coronavirus on New York City subways and buses, thanks to the Daily News for this little Very story nice. here today. What I love about this is all like the hardcore pro Trump people were like, see, I told you. And then like all <laughs> all like the Democrat people are like all butt hurt. But when you really read the the How? article I don't know. When you really read the article, they are... First of all, I, I'm shocked that you can use ultraviolet rays to kill a virus. I, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, when, that is cool. I, that, is, like, that is cool. Like, I am still uncomfortable with that. Like, even even though people are like, this works, I still want them to just, like, just hit it with some... Dis like, just spray some shit on it. Like, I need liquid. I need to see... I need to see the wiping away to be like, okay, that is... That's clean. But yeah, um, take a mop, please get a mop and bucket. Seriously, but um, the the reality is is they're they're using lights that are so strong that it would really harm a person if they would be exposed <laughs> to this kind of a light. So, well, I guess that's what they use or not for when you go like in the tanning beds, right, fam? Because you would know about that. <laughs> what would it look like, Polly D? Just because I got the front <laughs> of his hair going right now doesn't mean right. that him and I share any sort of. I don't know what is I'm it. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's stronger than tanning bed. If it's if it's dangerous, purposefully no, no, no. dangerous they can to get humans. Pretty hot. Yeah, have you they seen Snooki? Yeah, but they're made for people to use. Humans. That's yeah, true. This um, is probably going to be way stronger, so that obviously. I mean, why yeah. don't they just park it in the uh, in the the subway yard and just open the doors and let the sun shine in? Should we just open Something the doors like and let it let them air it out? I'm like it'll be fine. Let the sun shine. If that's what it's that's what UV rays it are. Well, I think this is like concentrated. If you if you look at the actual like device, it's like you know, it's like this actual device that stands there and I guess just like shoots the rays all out. And I don't know yeah. how Sounds long good. it has to, has to be there for, but I'm assuming that it's a faster process than actually wiping down all of the area. Which, and again, this is not a slide to anybody who works for the MTA or New Yorkers in general, but kind of New Yorkers in general. Do you have any confidence that these trains would be cleaned the proper way? Right? Have None. they ever no, been? I feel no. like... Yeah. 
I feel no. like the only way to do it is a fire hose in each uh, in each car. You go in there with a fire hose and you just blast everything, cover it in soap and bleach. That's the only way to clean that place. That's interesting because I think the only way to clean that place is to actually light a fire in Blow there and burn it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> just Throw down some alcohol. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Light it up. Let the Joker just in the there. Just the urine smell. Hang a couple air fresheners. There's something. I mean, this is an organization that literally never cleans these things to begin with. And now all of a sudden we're going to think that they're going to take this for real. Like they should have been cleaning it somewhat. And they weren't even. They claim they claim they have. Yeah. And any New Yorker that's ever been on a subway knows that that is blatantly no. untrue. No. My that's why was, I mean, you different. The, yeah. Oh. Do, you, do you remember? I mean, Frank, you still commute into the city, but do you remember the smell of your hand after grabbing that oh, you subway got that rail? metal smell. But I, I never, from uh, going into the city, I try with every fiber of my being not to touch a single thing in the subway. The bars, I, I surf. I like to surf. I don't like to, I, I'll lean against something with my back, but I won't touch the bars. I won't, I'll try not to sit. I prefer to just stand, because there's only a few stops. So I just stand and I try not to touch anything. What are you more passionate oh. about, not touching the bars or Nicolas Cage's mediocre career? Because it feels <laughs> like they're close. The bars affect me a little more. <laughs> <laughs> only slightly though all right just checking oh. i've actually seen frank surf on, on the subway he he is like a little bit of an ocd psychopath he'll go in and not touch a thing listen i've seen i've seen people literally while i'm on the subway normal regular people going to work sneeze into their hand and grab the pole not even like do sneeze into their hand wipe it and grab the pole which is still disgusting but sneeze and grab. And I'm like, this is why I'm not grabbing anything. This is why I'm not touching um, it. He did it right I, in front of me, too. That's nothing compared to what happened to me. That's true. Go ahead, and That's Jimmy. another reason I don't touch anything. I want to know that. I want to hear this story. You know this story, don't you? On the subway? Yes. Yeah, this is a good one. Well, share with okay. the audience if you want to share. Go ahead. I thought I did, but maybe not. Um, Friday afternoon, I'm... Um, Going down the ago. subway. This is years ago. Mm -hmm. Going down into the subway by um, 42nd Street over there. And I have bags on my hand. And it's raining. And I don't want to trip and fall. And I try not to touch the stairwell when I walk down. But I had to because I was, was going to fall. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding on. And I get to the bottom. What is this? Oh, no. Yeah. Um, did someone sneeze? Or is no. this jizz? Oh, stop it. I swear to God. On the edge of the banister going into the subway? Yes. And for my own sanity, I had to smell it. Uh, <laughs> and were you able to identify? Stop it was. It. it had that oh so bleachy smell. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you know what else is weird? It was at the bottom of the banister. It may have started at the top and kind of just made its way down to the uh, bottom. There was a lot of it. Uh, maybe not then. I don't know. And I think, wait, the worst part, I was, I, I was like, what the fuck? And I, I like looking around, am I on Canada camera? No. I had no napkins with me. Oh, no. The only thing I had oh, no. was a newspaper that I was like going all over my hands. So Ooh. I get on the subway and my hands are black. <laughs> so people <laughs> looked at me like, like, what the hell is wrong with this woman? It was crazy hair because it was raining. I had uh, five bags with me and I had black hands. This is, the worst, crazy th I this is the worst story I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> How long between contact to washing it off properly? Um, about an hour. Uh. Yep, because I had to take it from 42nd to Howard Beach.
With that your face fresh. That's a miserable ride, by the way. That is a miserable train ride. It is a, one of the most horrible rides. When and the sun is shining and you've just taken a shower and you're nice and clean and in a hazmat suit, that's a miserable ride. I can't imagine with some <laughs> stranger's uh, <laughs> substance on you. Dear Lord. So from that day on, I was known as Janine Jizz Fingers. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Wait, I've heard the this best. story before, and it still grosses me out, man. <laughs> when I told my mother this story, she was like, "How did you know what that was?" And I looked at her, and she was like, "Oh, Janine, I'm so disappointed." <laughs> From movies, ma, ma. Wait, how? No, were you, were you working, no, no. or you were working? I was working. She, okay. I mean, she she acts like. Still, it's a disappointment. I mean, How'd you know? Oh my God! Why would you? I, How I, were you able to identify it? I swear so to God. So I told her. Well, it tasted well. It tasted. The same. Oh. <laughs> no. Hi, mom. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh my ah. goodness! I have I never heard this story before. I, I thought you have. Never I heard. You not story. chopped your hands off. I don't know if I would have told a soul if that happened to me. <laughs> yeah, they don't make I water mean. hot enough. I remember like coming in like this, and Gatano's like, "What is wrong with you?" And I'm like, oh, "Got on my fang. You got to use like sandpaper and a mm -hmm. blowtorch to get that off. I mean, here's the weird thing, and I don't want to. I, I the last thing I want to do is second guess you here, make you feel bad for your choices <laughs> in life. But I have to think that. Going back up and, and finding a bathroom and washing it all immediately, ah. that, that wasn't... Oh, oh and you're, in, you're in the city. If that were the beginning of the day, that's a day off. No, that's it was a, me going home. I turn home. around and go home. Yeah. It was, it was me. It was, t it was like me leaving work. And I, there was no way I was going to go to a bathroom at 42nd Street. Mm. Uh. Yeah, I, and that, that's something that I don't like. Unless you've been to the city, I don't know if people will will relate to that because they're probably like, "Why don't you just go wash your hands?" But you do have that like, "I just got to get out of here. I just got to get out of the city. I got to get home." Yeah. Oh. Where do you go? I mean, you're already there. Oh, I can't even. That's horrific. <laughs> that is... How was there, everyone? <laughs> oh, may the fourth with be with you. <laughs> What time was this? And also with you. <laughs> what time of day was this? It was probably like five o'clock. Yeah, people are messed up, man. Disgusting. You know, you know how many people that probably got to? Walking down a 42nd Street Station subway thing. I'm sure a bunch of people hit that, touched that thing too. It was like right underneath the railing that curves like right in that spot. Like right yeah, here it, to hold it. Was it was gathered there. Gravity fed right down to the the apex of that what, banister. What year was it? When you when you have that moment in life where you just look up and you're like, God, I hope I see an impractical joker. Please let there be an impractical joker. Near yeah. <laughs> Is Ashton this Kutcher like, gonna jump out from some van or something? Please, dear God. 2010. Oh. Man. I don't think they were around yet. <laughs> well, happy 10 year anniversary of Janine Jis. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it was around this time so you never know probably was around this time yeah we're gonna change the lower third to say janine just fingers now from now on if that's what it's gonna say. <laughs> we gotta like register that domain name i can't even janine look I, honestly I, I don't even want to be friends with you anymore i'm regretting every time <laughs> i've eaten a meal at your house over the last 10 years. I'm starting years. to appreciate social distancing a lot more. I know. <laughs> Dude, I was just having that thought that if this was today, hopefully there would be some disinfectant, like like hand sanitizer, like around. Which, why hasn't that been around to begin with? Like, why aren't we pumping Purell down into the subways? Like, that would be a good idea in general, you know? You know what would People happen to those things? Steal it. Yeah, definitely. Somebody Stolen, with jizz on it. Destroyed. <laughs> just Someone with jizz on it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> To be filled with urine by the end of the day. <laughs> you can't give us anything yeah. nice. You just can't, can't give us can't anything, anything nice. One person. That's all it takes is one person to ruin <laughs> it for everyone. It's true. 
We're the worst. We're the the New Yorkers. I, I don't touch anything in the subway. It's just a big. It's a toilet down there. Yeah. Disgusting. I get it. I don't Little know. Toilet. I honestly don't think. I think we should end the podcast on on Janine Joe's fingers because there's no point in going any further. There's no getting better than that. No, I don't think we're gonna top this. <laughs> yeah. Where was the newspaper? Was it in your bags? Were you ca- it was. Oh my god! So you had to open your bag and reach in. Well, it was like one of those, like it wasn't closed the bag. So I remember just reaching in with the other hand, just wiping it. And people must have thought, like, you know, there's a lot of crazy people on the subway. They must have saw me. No. Like. Yeah, I know. Did anybody see it? Did anybody see it happening? Like, did anybody see you coming to the realization of, oh my god, no. Yeah, because that's the other part, too. Like, when, when weird things happen to you, you just don't want anybody to see it. Because the, right. the worst thing is somebody reacting to it. Oh. You know? It would have yeah, made it so sorry, much worse. Man. You're right. <laughs> no, you get a little sympathy from someone that you don't know. That's, that's, that's nice. What would I even say? It's jizz. <laughs> <laughs> you would look crazy. That's true. If you're holding it in your hand and you're yelling that, you'd look like a, a mental patient. Yeah, because, because Frank, you're picturing like there. It wouldn't be some some elderly woman who has filled with compassion. It'd be some young asshole and be like, "Oh man, you got jizzed on. Look at that." Like, right. yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it would be. That, that's when you like attack. The, that's when you put your hand right in their face. I know. <laughs> oh, lick it at goodness! Them. All right. <sighs> well, you do the old Spider Man. We can never put this episode out. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> i think i just invented a new thing for like what is that um what's the urban uh, wikipedia urban dictionary yeah it's a, the spider-man we shouldn't call you janine just fingers we should call you peter parker oh. from now on peter parker. that's probably a thing look it up on urban janine chis fingers <laughs> nice <laughs> can we submit to them to the audience that's watching and listening do yourself a favor and never google janine you don't want to know <laughs> no, you don't what will come up oh, absolutely not all right frank uh so what are you off to do uh you stream in uh skywalker movie first gotta watch some star wars today i did watch a little this morning it is may the 4th so i have to say may the 4th be with everyone yes may the 4th be with you all all that stuff and everything i will say on uh i found a new by the way princess bride popped up on my disney plus yes so i'll be watching watch that it? yep yeah today like well no not today but I, it's the next chance i get i'm gonna put it on i'll watch it um terribly busy yeah i found All right. i found a new show that i'm obsessed with prop masters i think it's called on disney plus this dude goes that around talks about all the props that are on like that are in movies and he hunts them down and he like finds them and like shares them cool. with some of the actors and stuff it was kind of it was super nerdy but it was really good um i so dig it i watched that instead of watching princess bride but i only had like 20 minutes to kill so that's why that happened any final thoughts janine you okay i feel like we should get you counseling i feel like i should pay for a counselor um just don't touch the end of that handrail yeah that's it. How Don't are people? Anything. How are people going to go back to work in Manhattan with this coronavirus when this was a, just an ordinary day in 2010? Wait. I am 100 percent on board with working from home for as long as I'm at the, uh, at my current job. I mean, it's crazy. Any final thoughts, Frankie C? Final thoughts. Jesus. Uh... Oh, I thought he was Wait, doing the. Out. I on. thought he was doing the frozen bit with us again. I thought he was yeah. pretending to be frozen. Ah. Go ahead. Ah. <laughs> um, watch as many Nicolas Cage movies as you can. Oh God! No. Star Wars, baby. Get into it if you haven't. Today's the day. Um, let's see what else. Cheers to Janine Jizz fingers. Oh, okay. To you, Janine. Here we go. We're all drinking and, uh, water. Good luck. Good luck with your uh, with all your homemade haircuts, DIY haircuts out there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Good luck with that. All right. AnthonyOnAir.com has all the information on how you can watch or listen to the podcast if you made it this far. Bless your heart. Thank you. I mean, you really, you got to the jizz finger story. That's, 
You can get through anything. You can get through coronavirus if you got through the end of this this (laughs) podcast. Have a great day.